But first of all, let's look into our very first story. Now, we had this man here on our set last week, Friday. Today, he's in the news. And this is the former governor of Cross River State, who is currently a presidential aspirant, Donald Duke. He has blamed former governors in the Senate for the troubles in the House. According to him, much of the crisis witnessed in the National Assembly may not be far-fetched from the fact that many governors, after leaving office, become senators and go on to hold such positions for a long time. In a tweet via his handle, he wrote, The Senate won't find peace until former governors stop making it a retirement home. The National Assembly in recent times has been at the forefront of intrigues following the invasion by operatives of the Department of State Services on Tuesday, as well as political activities surrounding Bukola Saraki, Senate President and former Governor of Kwara State, as well as Senator Goswil Akpabiu, who is a former Governor of Akwaibom State. Leila, I think what this brings to mind is the phrase, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. It's why mm -hmm. we see people who have been in power for the first tenure, you know, they come back again for a second tenure, and the moment they're done, they don't want to relinquish power, but because they know they can't come back for a third term, then they go to the House and become senators as well. Olive, what exactly, though, what exactly are the entitlements of our ex-governors? Oh, yes, I, I should actually look at that. So, as ex-governors, mm. now the question is, some of them go back into the House, you know, as senators, but the question we should ask is, will they still get the benefits do them as ex-governors while still getting the benefits that accrue from like the being senators. Running costs. Running costs of how many million. <laughs> okay, so now real quick, an article here says, you know, let's go into facts and figures. Nigeria spent close to 40 billion naira on pension of former governors and former deputy governors in the last couple of months. We'll be looking into the details of the story as to what the governors are doing in the House and outside of the House. We couldn't allow the show to continue without your favorite political analyst, Ezegu Chukudi, it's in the studio. You're looking like a real Yoruba. No, 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 you know, you will not use your mouth to call everything. You can't say somebody is looking like the definition of, uh, uh, you say, uh, 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 you are looking like an ex-governor. <laughs> and uh, you know where all ex-governors go to. Honorable uh, Ezugu Chukudi. <laughs> yes. Happy weekend. weekend. How's the weekend going for you? Well, you see, it's like to be ex-governor now in Nigeria is the uh, latest uh, goal in life. So even though I am not a governor yet, talk more of becoming an ex. I'm just going to start dressing like a, one of them. One You're of calling them. those things that be not as though they were. So Chukuri, mm. let's go straight into the details of the story. Last week we had Donald Duke here on set, and now he's gone on to tweet that the National Assembly will know no peace until ex-governors stop making it a retirement home. Now Leila and I were speaking about this, and it just boils down to the fact that he said that power, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. People find it difficult to relinquish power. They don't want to let go. So they go for first term or second term, and then they finish second term, and then they come back. Now, I was just reading the entitlement of ex-governors. My question is, I'm wondering, whilst they are serving as senators, do they still get the benefits that um, are accrued to ex-governors? I'll just read uh -huh. some of them. According to the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, which prescribes 300% severance for the governors as stated in the Certain Political Office Holders and Judicial Officers Remuneration Act, according to provisions, provisions of the um, RMAFC, these people enjoy brand new cars every three to four years, accommodation at the state capital and sometimes in Abuja, 30-day paid holiday outside the country and free medical treatment for the former governors and their immediate family members. Now, this is just Olive. In relationship, Brilliant. Eh, <laughs> in a relationship, eh, if both parties go their separate ways and it is not under acrimonious circumstance, I mean, there's nothing wrong in sending happy birthday when it's a birthday now, only birthday. At least for the sake of the memory. All time. Oh, uh, uh, what are we saying? It's not easy to be a governor. So when you now become an ex-governor, and you now proceed to the Senate where you want to retire, you should be receiving both ways now. But everybody knows this is irony. Or I'm being sarcastic. sarcastic. No, they don't know. Let's just... The reality. truth <laughs> is... The, you see, the truth is... There's too much waste in government. 40 billion naira for ex-governors. There is too much waste in government. In fact, waste does not best quantify or qualify what rubbish and nonsense. You serve as a governor for eight years or deputy governor for four years or eight years and you proceed to the Senate. I mean, there's nothing wrong in perpetuating yourself in power in the interest of the people or if you want to exercise your rights. Because the truth is, the Constitution spells it out clearly. 
that you can be in the National Assembly for as long as you want to be in the National Assembly, but you cannot exceed a maximum um, number of eight years or period of eight years if you are serving as a governor. But what we have seen is people who have no business other than being in government. I recall growing up as a child, I'm not going to mention anybody's name, there was somebody that served in virtually every government, whether military dictatorship, whether civilian regime. Do you know that it got to a point the person even offered to serve for free? It's not because of the love the person has, it's because the person has no other thing to do. If the person goes to an office, the person will fall sick. Why? Because the person is used to just idling away in government. And the reason why I say it's idling away is because Nigerians do not see a commensurate impact in their lives when we look at what we expend. Now, what we must do as a people is get involved and begin to participate. I don't see why there will be no outrage or outcry to know that somebody who served as a governor for eight years is receiving uh, what we call pension as former governor, and the person is in the Senate and still receiving running costs. So should it be that we should now start looking at ways to, you know, ensure that we put laws and policies that put a restriction on how long you can stay in this? No, so no, it's not about how long, how well. I grew up reading about the Nigeria Civil War, and there was a particular senator in the United States of America, Ted Kennedy, whose name always came up. I was wondering, ah, this man has been there since how long? Does he want to die there? But when I got a grasp of the American uh, 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 system of government, I understood that it is essentially about service. In fact, he died as a senator. Hold on a second. So if Donald Duke somehow aspires to the office that he's running for, is he also going to still be receiving his that is the pro That is hmm. the problem. Very interesting. You, you would remember that I said that there are two classes of Nigerians. Those who enjoy the largesse of government and the suffering masses of the people. Now, what do these people do? They tweak the instrument of the law or use the instrument of the state in their own advantage, or to their own advantage. Now, somebody puts it that as an ex-governor, I'm going to receive so, 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 and so, because I serve my people. That same person that is wise, because, you know, now it's a tortoise kind of uh, movement, will now proceed to the Senate, receiving running costs. And my sisters, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You. Receiving running costs, I see receiving this one. But the person is not doing anything illegal. Why? Because it is codified. Now, Nigerians must begin to become aware. Let's ask questions. Let's see societies that are doing a lot, not NGOs, because everybody, every fine girl now or young boy is running NGO. We don't know where the NGO is running. They should just remove the G in the middle and put NO because it's money all of them are looking for. Now, the truth is, if we begin to ask questions, then we will know why things are not working. Because if as an ex-governor, ah, my sister, it's not easy to be a governor in this country, a senator that wanted to be governor, but the governor of the state now said, I am not God. Mm -mm. But I know those that will not succeed me, and you are one of them. <laughs> when he was explaining the reason why he wanted to be governor, do you know what he said? It's not, you can Google it. He said, ah, and I'm just trying to be dramatical, because from the way I read it, I want to use, ah, if you see the convoy of a governor, yes, that shows you the level of thinking. I don't understand how you can feel comfortable when there is abject poverty and penury where your country is one-tenth the size of India, but we have more people living in the abject poverty, extreme poverty. You know, extreme poverty is the, extreme poverty is not the elder, you know, elder is somebody that, you know, if you- It's if, below the poverty line, if, essentially. If, if, you, if, they, if they groom you in family where, you know, things are, you, know, you have elder brother, but if they groom you in family where everything is strong, you have senior brother, because that's where you will know the difference, you understand? Somebody, your, your, your senior brother will senior you with 10 years, and two of you will still be dragging for to share meat. You know the way the, the mm -hmm. struggle of the family is. Okay. The truth <laughs> is, as Nigerians, mm. the little we know, we must begin to put the information out there. Let Nigerians understand that some of these people are just enriching themselves at the detriment of the Nigerian people. One full public office holder. Wait, so must you be all too? No, I, I'm, I'm trying to be. Because I'm, even me, I'm not used to it. You know, today I said I would dress like an ex governor, but I'm not wow. really used to it. It's really telling me that I should be normal, <laughs> like a normal person. You look at one public office holder, that, that public office holder that you see is a state with the resources that from our collective patrimony, we invest in that person. You now look at the suffering masses of Nigerians that will collect 3,000 on the eve of election, that will, they will buy our vote with 5,000 and 4,000 based on umbrella and broom, and we are, we are, we are, we are grappling with, with poverty. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.